G'day guys, Ziggy D here. Lately I've been thinking on the question of what are the best builds to start out with as a brand new player to the hardcore game mode. So you know, someone who's played standard leagues for a while but wants to swap over to hardcore and see if it's their jam. I get this question every now and then and usually my recommendation is something like Flame Blast Totem, Summon Raging Spirits, or just about any other like totem build usually. And these are all great hardcore choices. But recently I've been testing something that's a lot more hands-on and direct a block bleed explosion gladiator. It's tanky, versatile melee that's a lot of fun to play with an awesome blood explosion to destroy packs with. Then a build like this has the potential to grow into a max block setup and take on just about any content in the game. Well, I've leveled through to early endgame on just such a build in Hardcore Solo Cell Found to test just how new hardcore player friendly it might be. I've been pretty blown away by the results, pun intended. It's been an extremely solid leveling experience, even with no leveling gear besides what I could find or craft in Solo Cell Found. Very tanky for much of it, and surprisingly good clear with some absolute garbage weapons as well. In this video I'm going to run through my leveling experiences and share some tips for you guys who might want to try out Hardcore for the first time with a build like this. I think there are some advantages to playing a build like this in Hardcore 2 over something like, say, a Flame Blast Totem. You get a much more hands-on and direct uh, kind of like set of feedback from the actual gameplay. And uh, that allows you to, you know, get up in the face of monsters and see how much damage they deal. And, you know, you can build tanky to be able to survive that stuff and be able to get through the game in Hardcore. And maybe it'll take your future eyes. You know, you should expect to die as a new player to Hardcore. That's all part of the Hardcore experience. But it's going to give you much more, I think, information and much more feedback on your play in Hardcore as well so I think there's some solid advantages playing something like this and it's just a lot of fun as well potentially a lot more interesting than playing something like a totem build so starting out you're going to be using cleave or ground slam for the first 12 levels with added fire damage in a two link use any decent two-handed weapon or even dual wielding one-handers if you get some decent ones keep in mind that if you go with cleave you'll have to stick with bladed weapons not daggers and claws though they don't work you have to be axes or swords etc and if you go ground slam you'll need maces or staves Grab an Ancestral Protector to help with bosses and tough packs, and you'll sell it through to level 12. At level 12, from the Mervale Caverns Waypoint, you'll get the quest reward to get Sunder, which is an insanely good leveling skill that you can use until the end of time if you like. I'm still using it endgame. Grab a faster attacks and melee physical damage when you get the sockets to 3 and 4 link with Sunder, and you'll be kicking ass. I leveled dual wielding much of the way, just because I found some like okay one-handers and not too many good two-handers. And because Sunder only uses your main hand weapon, you can get the dual wielding bonuses of like more fizz damage and attack speed, while only needing one good weapon, so you don't actually need two good one-handers. And if you find yourself something that gives a useful effect in your offhand, like Cullen Onslaught on Relentless Fury for example, then you can use it effectively as a shield and get those benefits without needing to worry about its DPS. So grab Herald of Ash for damage and overkill ignites, and Arctic Armor for easy defense and chills on bosses in Act 2. You can also pick up Blood Rage and use that to boost your clear speed. Though be careful at the low levels because you won't have enough regen to easily sustain it, and you'll have to chug your flasks a bit. Once you level up a bit, you'll naturally through the Duelist and Marauder areas get enough regen to sustain this. In Act 3 you can transition to Earthquake if you like, which is an extremely good skill. It has better single target than Sunder and is pretty easy to clear with, but Sunder does better for clearing if you can aim it well. By the way, good Sunder use is about aiming at the most dense part of the monster packs to get as many explosion triggers as possible. The way it works is it does like a little mini ground slam effect, and every monster that hits triggers an AoE explosion, so the more monsters you hit, the more damage you deal overall. If you decide to go Earthquake instead of Sunder, just try both and see what you like. Make sure to go do the library quest for the Less Duration Support Gem. You're probably gonna, gonna wanna go do it anyway to get other gems that you'll need. You'll wanna do Normal Labyrinth as early as you feel comfortable because the first two points in Gladiator give you the bleeds and explosions that make this playstyle so juicy. And these really boost your clear speed as well. I went in around level 36, but it could probably be done earlier if you get a decent weapon and flasks. Speaking of flasks, make sure to keep your healing flasks up to date, always in Hardcore, and make sure to get an instant healing flask like Bubbling or Seething by level 30 at the latest, ideally, you know, level 26-ish. The sooner you can get a granite flask, the better as well. I found one pretty early on, on this run, and rolling it with Iron Skin Suffix gave me so much armor I could just about face tank anything physical while leveling. So if you're playing in a league where you can trade, spending an alk or two to buy an early granite is really worth it. Totally worth swapping out your third life flask for a granite, it's just a lot better overall. Later on you can get a Blasphemy Curse setup running, and with the Mana Leech from the Duelist Clusters and just a Mana Flask for when you're using a Shield Charge or Leap Slam, you can, you'll be fine on Mana. You can use Blasphemy Vulnerability if you want more damage, or Temporal Chains or Enfeeble if you want more survivability. I'm opting for Temp Chains at the moment. 
When you're looking for weapons for leveling a build like this, prioritize physical DPS as much as possible for Herald of Ash and Added Fire. Added elemental damage mods don't hurt you, but high physical DPS scales the best. So you're looking for things with like percentage physical damage, added flight physical damage, and attack speed. Always remember when playing a attack build like this that you need to update your weapons every 10 levels or so while leveling. If you let it languish too far behind, unless you have a really good weapon, your DPS is going to hurt a lot and you'll notice yourself really struggling on rares and bosses. As for what weapons to actually use while leveling a build like this, it's actually extremely flexible. You can use good two-handed weapons if you find them, they work fine. As long as you've got like a mace or a staff, you can use Sunder. You can uh, use Earthquake with just about anything. And uh, you can use one-handed weapons with dual wielding or with that like Southpaw one-hand style with uh, something like Sunder where it only uses the main hand attack. Honestly, just check all rare weapons that drop and use the best one that you find. Don't really stress about the fact that you might have some like points in, you know, one-handed nodes or shield nodes or something like that when you're using a two-handed weapon or if you're not yet using a shield and you're dual wielding instead for the damage bonus because a few misplaced passives while leveling don't really outweigh a good weapon. A good weapon easily, easily, you know, is worth it despite those nodes. For your passive tree progression, grab the starting duelist nodes and then head out through the Scion life wheel into the Marauder area. Grab the damage, life, and resists, and then rush to Resolute Technique, which is a big damage boost while leveling. From there, you can grab life and damage nodes as you see fit. Once you find a decent weapon that you're like feeling like you're pretty set in for a while, you can grab relevant damage nodes as well. I'm sticking with axes in my setup, so I've grabbed the axe cluster by the Marauder. By about level 50-ish, you should aim to get the Duelist Leech nodes to help you with mana mostly, and a little bit of sustain, and grab the Frenzy Charge as well for your Blood Rage, which you should be running all the time now. So here's where I'm at at early endgame solo self found. I've been at Dried Lake for a little while and done some endgame maps as well. It's been running extremely nicely. I swapped from Leap Slam to Shield Charge a little while back and that's been a big improvement. And my clear speed has been uh, surprisingly good, especially when you consider the context of the uh, weapons and things like that I have. You can see a lot of stuff just blows up from Shield Charge as well. So you can use Abyssal Cry to add additional explosion damage on packs, and most things just get one-shotted with Sunder as well, which works out pretty nicely. For any like large, uh, larger or more difficult packs, you can throw down your uh, Ancestral Warchief that you upgrade into, and uh, it just runs really nicely. It's super fun to play, like really surprised at how nicely this plays and uh, how well the clear speed has worked out. Single target is the only thing that really lags behind with a Sunder setup, uh, when you have a terrible, terrible gear like I do. But uh, for early endgame, that's not a big deal. You can still kill tier 1 and tier 2 map bosses just fine. And uh, the main thing that you actually need at this point is just to get XP. And you get XP just from clearing regular packs. So just running through and aiming that Sunder into the middle of the pack and just blowing everything up with those bleed explosions is uh, super satisfying, as you can see. It's a really fun build to play, and I've just been uh, really, really surprised by how nicely it has actually played out. So I'll give you a quick look at my gear and uh, a few tips as far as like gearing up at early endgame goes for a build like this. So this is all solo self found gear, just stuff that I found or crafted while leveling. This is probably one of my best items here just for context. So uh, just keep an eye out for four links, you know, that's a priority. So I managed to get a four link chest here with uh, some life and resist and that's basically what you're going for in your helmet uh, and your chest armor. Move speed on boots is ideal. Thankfully, I've got a pretty nice pair of boots here with move speed, life, and resist. Shield, uh, ideally, you do want to get some, like, life, some armor evasion, or uh, block is really nice as well. But you can also just use it as a slot to fill out your stats. You want to swap to shields around, around level 60-ish once you uh, get a, a decent weapon, hopefully. But uh, also, because at that point, you're going to want to start picking up some of the shield nodes. So you'll travel through here. You can grab Defiance, you can grab this shield cluster, and you can grab these guys. And that actually gives you a decent amount of defense here. I'm seeing a 42% chance to block attack. And, and that's before I've gone and done Merciless Lab and got this block node, and certainly haven't done Uber Lab to get this block node either. So still 42% block as well as the armor evasion. And you know the life and resist that comes with that. And uh, because of these melee physical nodes and attack speed and melee physical nodes in this area, this was actually a damage upgrade swapping to a shield from dual wielding that I was using, even though I had found a Rel Relentless Fury and was offhanding with that early on. So I was using this for the Culling Strike Onslaught, uh, but uh, even with the dual wielding bonuses of more damage and attack speed, it was a damage upgrade for me because of those nice kind of efficient nodes. You can get a surprising amount of uh, damage nodes with shields nowadays with these uh, nodes like this that are all essentially damage nodes while holding a shield. 
So uh, once you've got a few of those, you know, you're going to want to swap to that shield uh, early end game ish in terms of your damage, you can really help your damage out a lot despite your weapon. I'm going to look at that last by uh, looking for things like physical damage and attack speed on your gloves. Physical damage, any elemental damage also adds on your rings and amulets as well. You can see most of my stuff has some damage on it. Uh, I've recently traded out for an amulet that doesn't have any damage, but a lot of the time, especially while leveling, you want to be trying to prioritize those damage stats on your rings and amulets. You know, if you use like a two stone ring, you're getting some resists, and then you can just look for something that has a little bit of damage on it, maybe a little bit of life or something else. So it's got some fierce damage and some strength, which is life and damage as well. We've got some damage, you know, mods here. Like these are pretty garbage, right? But that damage really supplements your damage quite nicely. And then we come to the weapon. Look at this absolute piece of garbage weapon that I'm using. So the clear speed and uh, everything has been surprisingly good given the level of this weapon that I'm using right here. This is literally a vendor crafted weapon. And the weapon I was using before this was even worse than this, but uh, vendor crafted reaver axe as a bare minimum. You can find these in dried lake. So just like kill some mobs and look around on the ground for a reaver axe is surprisingly good. Uh, the actual fizz DPS here is a whopping 168, but that's like all you need to get started in the end game. Like Soul Self Found or as your first hardcore character in a new league or your first hardcore character ever. You can actually kill stuff with this and pretty well. Those bleed explosions really give you nice AOE clear speed with Sunder or Earthquake. And uh, really surprising how well that works. So uh, you can actually make one of these quite easily. Just find that reaver axe, like I said. You can either find an axe from a vendor or on the ground. You can use a siege axe if you can't find a reaver axe and you use that for a while until you find a reaver axe. But reaver axe has really nice base physical damage. And the belt recipe that I'm about to show you gives you increased physical damage, which leverages that quite nicely. And because you want to just be running around and one-shotting stuff, even though this is a low attack speed weapon, that works out quite nicely. So you just grab an axe like this, right? Doesn't matter if it's already got some mods on it, it can be white or it can have some mods on it. And then you take a rare rustic sash like this one, you can actually buy a rustic sash in Alkit. If you get a really good one, you can just wear it. Like I found an okay one here that I've alked earlier that I'm just wearing. But if you get a bad one, you can do this recipe, you can alk a couple rustic sash, use the best one, use the rest of them for crafting. Then you just take a blacksmith whetstone, your weapon and the rustic sash, and you'll get a physical damage mod. Now this ranges between 50 and 64. So if you get under 60, what you'll want to do is replace either just use different axe and you'll get a different value or replace this rustic sash with just a blue one and then trade it in. So you'll notice that before it was 55. We trade it in now and then what we do is we do the same thing again with the rare and this time the value will be different. So now we've got 59% instead. So I can, I can take this up at one and augment it and just use that for a while. Or I can do that a few times with blue rustic sashes and then eventually use my rare once I get like 60 plus. So I'll just take this 59 for now, it's fine. And uh, chuck an augment, hoping for something like attack speed, critical strike chance not useful, but that's a usable axe. So and I can literally just go kill stuff with this right now and it'll work just fine. <laughs> Surprisingly enough, that works just fine. And then, you know, just keep picking up any rare axes, even blue axes that you find, or whatever base weapon type that you're going for, if you're going for a different one. And, uh, and you know, you'll eventually find an upgrade. It's not going to be hard to self-find an upgrade out of this. And of course, if you're playing a trading league for like one chaos, you can find an axe that's got three times the DPS or something like this. But, you know, if you're first ever character, or if you're playing solo self-found, or if you're in a new league, then you can totally do that and, you know, do just fine with that. So that's it for the leveling portion of this. I'm going to take this character a little bit further in Solo Self Found, then I'm probably going to swap over to regular leagues and throw some gear at it, and then I'll probably get back to you guys with an update on uh, what this sort of build looks like once you start putting some uniques on it and some uh, better gear, because uh, it starts to get really interesting once you start stacking that and scaling that block especially. Uh, a lot of the f like late game progression of this to get into really high end content and do things like guardians and stuff is going to be about getting certain uniques that uh, get you that max block rate. You know, get the, get you that 75, 75 block and spell block. And uh, that's probably where I'll uh, update you guys in the future. But I just thought this was a really fun leveling experience. And I think it's a really solid build for a first time hardcore player. You know, with Sunday, you can hang back a little bit, use it a little bit ranged. But you're also really tanky. And the DPS just works, even if you have really garbage weapons that are just even vendor crafted like this. So uh, I thought it was a, a great starting point for you guys who might want to check out hardcore. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video, something a little bit different. Anyway, that's it for now. I'm Ziggy D, and thank you very much for watching.